Reiko Kodama is one of the most influential and famous graphic artists, directors, and producers in the video game industry. She is known for working on famous Sega titles such as Altered Beast, Sonic 1 and 2, Magic Knight Ray Earth, the Fantasy Star series, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Skies of Arcadia, and many more. When Nintendo Power was still being published, she was nicknamed the First Lady of RPGs in an interview that appeared in the magazine. Ryuko Kodama was born in May of 1963. She was born in Yokosuka, Kanagawa, Japan. Yokosuka is a city located in the Kanagawa Prefecture, which is on the island of Shikoku, which is in Japan. When she was a kid in grade school, her family ran a kisaten, which literally translates to coffee shop in English. Her family's kisaten was a cafe in the daytime, but served alcohol in the evening. After the kisaten would close for the night, Kodama would play games like Space Invaders or Galaxian, Pac-Man or Exevious. Kodama liked games and thought they were fun, but wasn't super into them. Her parents felt the same way. They understood games, but weren't crazy about them either. Kodama also liked sci-fi movies. Her favorite movie series was Star Wars, and still is. During high school, Kodama developed an interest in graphic art for advertisements, which increased her desire for art. What I mean by increasing her desire for art is that Kodama wasn't super into drawing when she was young, which is surprising since she is famous partly because of her unique and cool art that she made for Sega. At the same time though, she was interested in ancient architecture, like pyramids and ancient civilizations that conceived them, such as the Mayans and the Egyptians. After high school, Kodama was stuck on pursuing either graphic design or archaeology in college. Whatever she chose, it didn't matter because she ended up flunking out of college anyway. After she flunked out of college, she enrolled in a trade school where it turned out she actually enjoyed graphic design very much. At that trade school, one of the seniors there had graduated a few years before and was hired at Sega. The senior said that game work was interesting. Kodama didn't just hear that game work was interesting though. Kodama also had little knowledge to absolutely no clue on what employees actually did at Sega and how games were made, just like everyone else who wasn't involved in game development themselves in the 1980s. But Kodama saw this unknown territory as a chance to push her talents as she took a deep dive into this mysterious world called the video game industry. So in 1984, after she graduated from her trade school, Kodama was hired at Sega. She was a rookie when she started, and to this day she is still embarrassed about the art she made for Sega in her early years. Before Kodama became a director and producer for games, she was hired as a graphic artist. Her job was to create graphic art for video games, and sometimes arcade cabinets, as well as looking at other people's hand-drawn art and translating it into pixel art for games, such as what she did for the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Senior employees at Sega and other colleagues showed her the ropes at Sega, such as how to animate her graphic art and how using your real name and game credits wasn't allowed. Sega believed that if other game companies knew the real names of their employees and liked what they heard or saw, their employees could be stolen from Sega, and their employees could start developing for other companies. So, Kodama used her nickname Phoenix Free and other slight variations for herself in game credits. No one knows the true meaning behind her nickname, other than that it's based on a manga character that she liked at the time. She learned a lot from her predecessors. The first game she ever worked on at Sega was Champion Boxing. Yu Suzuki, the future producer of Virtual Fighter, was the programmer. Ishii-san was the planner. And Kodama herself was the artist. Because it was her first game ever, Kodama was worried about the designs that she was making. She received guidance from more experienced Sega employees. 
After champion boxing, Kudama would be quite involved in RPGs. Another early game Kudama did the art for is Ninja Princess. Kudama did all the art for this game, and it was released for the Master System as well as in the arcades in 1985. In fact, the original Fantasy Star game, what she worked on, is her favorite Sega title. Fantasy Star was created to transcend and compete with Dragon Quest, a very popular JRPG at the time developed by Enix. Kodama has explained in past interviews that Dragon Quest was more than popular. It was the only well-known option in Japan at the time. Kodama has said that the original Fantasy Star game was inspired by Star Wars. Kodama also says that her and her team not only strived for Fantasy Star to be futuristic, but also have a return to the old as well. Kodama also thinks that Luke Skywalker's clothing gives off an Asian impression. She is right, since Star Wars was inspired by old samurai movies. In order to give the wide variety of culture Star Wars movies have and bring it into Fantasy Star, Godama and her small team put in a Japanese part, a Chinese part, a Korean part, an Indian part, etc. into the character's story and backgrounds. Kodama also says that her and her team not only strived for Fantasy Star to be futuristic, but also have a return to the old as well. Another well-known Sega title is Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia was released in October of 2000, so while the game was being developed for the Dreamcast, Kodama had to come a long way at Sega, so much in fact that she was the lead producer for Skies of Arcadia. Before Skies of Arcadia was being developed for the Sega Dreamcast, Sega's last console, Kodama and her smallest team were developing Skies of Arcadia for the Sega Saturn. Development was eventually switched to the Dreamcast. Did you know that while Skies of Arcadia was being developed for the Saturn, that the original concept was for the battles and story to take place on top of trains still on land? Yeah, air pirates and fighting on top of flying ships is way cooler. The element of adventure that is in Skies of Arcadia is from one of Kodama's team members. Kodama doesn't remember who it was, but she does remember that he was majoring in history at college during the development of the game. Kodama says that's because of his knowledge on history he knew about the Age of Discovery, as Kodama calls it, or the Age of Pirates when they roamed the vast ocean. I know, that's really broad because pirates have been around for like all of human history. That's just how Kodama describes it. That knowledge inspired Skies of Arcadia's element of adventure. In order to keep development on Skies of Arcadia quiet, they used codename Project Ares. The title was changed in 2000 to Eternal Arcadia. The name Eternal Arcadia was kept for release in Japan but changed the skies of Arcadia for American release. A few years back when Sega Ages was a thing, Ryuko Kodama was the lead producer and also a director. Kodama never thought that the old Sega games that she worked on more than 30 years ago would ever get re-released, but they did. A lot of titles from the Sega Genesis got re-released, which got Kodama remembering how many famous Sega games were on the Genesis and how influential the Sega Genesis was for Sega. Kodama's video game career has come a long way since she was a new employee at Sega. Call me bears! <laughs> Call me bears! Call me bears! Yes, I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a yummy, tummy, funny, lucky gummy. She has produced, directed, and has designed many famous Sega games. So much, in fact, that back in March 2019, Kodama received the Pioneer Award from the Games Developer Conference, or GDC, the largest video game conference in the world. The Pioneer Award is an award given to the best talents in the video game industry. Kodama was chosen for this award because of her groundbreaking achievements in the industry, such as her large contributions to famous Sega titles. She was told by Sega of America in an email that she was to receive this award. The comment from GDC in the email stated, She has dedicated herself to creating games that transcend gender and generations to give us countless hours of joy. Kodama was very appreciative of that. 
Kodama is the third Japanese winner of the Pioneer Award, after Yu Suzuki and Masaya Matsura, the developer of Parappa the Rapper, the first modern rhythmic video game. Kodama still received the award even though she couldn't attend the event in person. Ryuko Kodama has become over her long career one of the most notable women in the video game industry, and has contributed to many Sega games very popular among thousands of crusty old gamers on YouTube. She began her career in Sega's heyday, and has ended it painting in her house during her free time. She isn't officially retired, but may as well be because she hasn't contributed to a video game in terms of producing or directing in a really long time. The last time she contributed to a video game was in 2015, when she was a co-producer for 7th Dragon 3 Code. It has been even longer since she has made any art for a video game. What's that? Kodama has focused her career on making games everyone enjoys. In 2003, Kodama said that her favorite video game is Final Fantasy IV. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.